Right. So let's so let's then cut to the delta R's um, and group together the terms with the PDR. What you have here then is rho over t dTDR plus the PDR that multiplies rho over gamma over p minus rho over p less than zero. So there are densities on all terms. You can cancel that. Extract the pressure from the second term and multiply by the temperature. And then you have is the TDR plus temperature over pressure times the PDR, one minus gamma minus one must be less than zero. Subtract the second term from both sides and you have the condition for convection in terms of the temperature gradient. The temperature gradient must be less than T over P, the PDR, one minus one over gamma. So this is known as the Schwarzschild shield condition, the Schwarzschild shield instability condition. I said that the temperature gradient must be bigger than the radiative gradient for convection to kick in. And we find that the Schwarzschild shield instability condition is that the temperature gradient must be smaller than something. That's strange at first, until we realize that these gradients are negative. The temperature is increasing towards the center but the Z coordinate, the radial coordinate is going up. So the temperature gradient is actually negative. If you write this in terms of modulus, then the condition becomes that the modulus of the temperature gradient must be bigger now than to repeat times the modulus of the PDR times one minus one over gamma. So this defines the adiabatic temperature gradient for marginal instability. It's just the same equation, but with inequality. So the condition for convection is that the gradient is steeper than adiabatic. Whenever the temperature gradient is steeper than adiabatic, convection ensues. Let's write this in a more compact way. See that we have temperature and pressure. Let's divide both sides by the temperature. And now this is a logarithm. Let's multiply both sides by the radius. And therefore this becomes the derivative of the log of the temperature and the log of radius is equal to the derivative of the log of the pressure and the log of radius, one minus one minus one over gamma. Now, a simpler way to write this is to get rid of the DLNDR and write this in terms of DLNT over DLNP is equal to one minus one over gamma. Now, we if we do that, we don't need to keep track of the modules because even though temperature increased in the different direction as the radius, pressure and temperature increase in the same direction. The pressure is also increasing with depth. So you can get rid of the modules and it removes the need to keep track of the signs. Now it is common in the literature to call the right hand side nabla adiabatic. It's a notation that uh, you're, you're gonna see it's pretty much widespread find it confusing because you see gradient and you think gradient of what? But it simply means the adiabatic gradient and that is equal to then one minus one over gamma. This novel notation is widespread. It's in books, it's in papers, it's everywhere. So it's good that you know it. And more in general, you can simply write nabla is equal to the derivative of the log of the temperature and over the derivative of the log of the pressure. So it leads to a very compact way to write the condition for convection. Simply that the gradient, the, radi the temperature gradient is bigger than the adiabatic gradient. Again, this notation, even though it's a little bit confusing, it's widespread. It's compact and it's widespread. So based on that, you can write the equations of stellar atmospheres. You have the continuity equation of mass. The MDR is equal to four pi r square rho. You have the pressure equation, the equation of hydrostatic equilibrium minus GMR over R squared times density. You have the equation for luminosity, which is four pi R squared rho times epsilon. Epsilon is a nuclear reaction rate. And now I have the equation for temperature, which has a radiative component and a convective component. The radiation is when the flux is transported by radiation. That's three copper rho. Kappa here is the Ross luminosity times the density for luminosity over 64 pi r squared 
sigma t to the cube if the gradient is less than the a by the gradient and temperature over pressure times one minus one over gamma the pdr if the gradient is bigger or equal than the a by the gradient notice that the pdr here is the same as in the equation of hydrostatic equilibrium so these are the equation of stellar structure